welcome. Uh, before I butcher your name, how do you pronounce that? The full name is Gregoire, Gregoire Savoie, French Canadian. I go by okay. Greg. I go by Greg if that's easier. <laughs> that's a lot easier for me, yes. Um, well, thank you for joining. Uh, as, as you just mentioned, you are from Canada, but you've been in Australia for, you said, 10 years, right? 10 years. Got here in 2010. That's right. Okay. Okay. Um, well, tell everyone first a little bit about yourself. Sure. So my name is Greg, Greg Savo. The full name is Gregoire, if you look me up on socials, but uh, born and raised in Montreal, Canada. So I actually speak French. Okay. Um, the name. I lived 10 years in Vancouver as well. Uh, people mm -hmm. will be familiar with Vancouver. Um, I met my now wife online while I was living in Vancouver. She's Australian. So that's how that came into play. Okay. She visited me a couple of times in Canada. I visited her and her family. One thing led to another. When things got serious, yeah. there, was, there was like a five minute conversation of Canada or Australia. I'm like, yeah, no, no it's Australia. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. That's probably the cool. same. Yeah, and, and she was fine with it, so I moved here in May of 2010, permanently, mm -hmm. on a visa that uh, they call it the partner visa, where you, we had to officially get married within X period of time, which we did. We had planned on it anyway, so. Okay. And since then, uh, we have two young children, seven and four. Okay. Uh, we, live, we live out about an hour out um, southern, south, southwest of Sydney. So we're not in Sydney itself, mm. a bit more in the country. Uh, okay. But we, did, we lived in Sydney itself for about eight years and moved out here two, three years ago. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Um, so tell me a little bit real quick uh, about, well, Australia as a whole, I'm, especially you coming from another country to this country, what's some of the stuff that struck you that you didn't know that oh really that's out here or something like that you know funny enough the language i mean it's it's english yeah. just like the states or england or canada and so on but mm -hmm. but like like the states and within the u.s where you are there's different lingos or whatever's between Accents the states and whatnot Accents yeah and so mm -hmm. on and there's a lot of that and there's a lot of local what do they call them? Colloquialisms? I can never say that word. Okay. Uh, yep. And, uh, word of um, expressions, if you will. Mm -hmm. And there's a few times people have said things like fair dinkum. I'd say something <laughs> like a reaction. I'd say, um, oh, um, I, I just got myself, uh, I just got the car service. It's running a lot better now. And I yeah. would do fair dinkum. What? Uh, that means <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the job is doing well, or it's more like the mechanic did a good job. Okay. You'd say that about okay. somebody doing a good job, but the first time I'm like, what? Uh, yeah, what, yeah, yeah. Mean, why is it fair? And I have no idea what you're telling me. I got you. Yeah, that was one of the things I was looking up. All the different dialects that yeah. are around, um, where you could like just go into the next town. It's a completely different language, kind of, sort of. Um, so yeah, that was one thing. I, I think I've read about that, you know, throughout schools and just reading stuff over time as well. One of the things I wanted to jump into, because I haven't been able to on my last two that I did with one I did yesterday with a, a woman down in Mexico and then the Ecuador. Um, so hopefully you'll be able to help me out here. I have a fascination with like urban legends and stuff like that, right? Like, you know, uh, UK's got the Loch Ness Monster, America right. and Canada has Bigfoot, stuff like yeah. that. I was looking up if Australia had anything. And I come up with, and I'm, I, I think I'm pronouncing it right, the Bunyip. The Bunyip. Thank you. Okay. So you know about that. What is this? I'm looking at a picture of it, and I've read a little bit about it. But tell everybody uh, who's listening or going to be listening, what is Bunyip? Because I've never heard of it before today. Jamie, I'm so glad you brought it up. You might have seen my reaction. You were starting that question. I, I was going. Please say uh, it. Please say it. I don't know what kind of language we can do on this podcast, so I'll keep it. Do clean. Whatever, no, I can, 
Do it. I want to answer the bunny up question. Another thing about Australians, they sw- like it, it on the radio. On the radio, they will say fucking shit. Love l- it. L- l- like in a fun way. L- like they won't insult each other, but oh, that yeah. that was fucking that was fucking cool, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that on the radio. Yeah. I'm like, Jesus, did he oh, say yeah. that on the radio? And my wife was like, oh yeah, that's common here. I'm like, okay. Like not in Canada. Pretty sure not in the States. No. Yeah. Not unless like satellite radio or something like that. Yeah. Well, yeah, no, on the pods or whatever. But uh, yeah. yeah, no, on like the the ABC, which the uh, Australian Broadcasting Corporation. <laughs> They're going, fucking great, man. I'm like, what the? Really? <laughs> Next to the bunny. That's cool. Yeah. My, my reaction was. I recently read a story mm. to my seven-year-old, and he talked about the bunyip. And initially, so the story goes, I'll sort of compress it here. Yeah. A child was uh, meant to go or wanted to go swimming. It, it's something like that. It, it's an underwater creature. Okay. Yes, yes. Yes, it's an underwater creature. And the mother kept telling him, don't, don't go swimming. Or the and it goes like the fish will eat you, but the the bunyip is an underwater creature that would allegedly yeah <laughs> kill or eat or I don't know if it eat, but it, it it kills children that go swimming at wrong times or did the wrong yeah. thing and so on. Okay, mm-hmm. now there, to my knowledge, and, and it's funny because I I read that story to my son and I uh, my wife came home and said, oh. I, Red Andre, this story about a fish, about a child going in, and she goes, "Oh, you mean the bunyip?" I'm like, "What?" So it's a, <laughs> it's a yeah. well-known thing. I do believe it originates with our First Nations or Aboriginal people. Yes, yes. Okay. And it's been, I guess, modified or changed, like a lot of things have uh, everywhere, oh, yeah. and that's okay. Uh, but that's the bunyip. There, what I was gonna say, there's no bunyip. So it's not like Loch Ness where people say they've seen it. It's okay. Just okay. T- it's just a story. Yeah. It, it's not a physical creature that people claim to have, like Sasquatch, people claim to have seen. Right? Yeah. Loch Ness, people claim to have seen. Mm. And yep, as far as I know, is has always been just a story. Just and a story. It, I got you. I think it's more a story along. Um, the whole story is more about be careful about not going swimming yeah or you, or as a child or you could drown yeah. so they turned it into there's a, a mean monster that'll kill you <laughs> hey that makes sense <laughs> might as well you can't get kids to listen just scare them there you go <laughs> that'll work that's the bunyip and it, it's great that you brought that up because i just read that to my son recently and my wife who is like i said born and bred aussie she's oh yeah bunyip and we grew up with that story and mm-hmm. i'm like okay are there any more off the off the top of your head that you can think of that are kind of like that? I didn't I didn't I couldn't find a lot though. The only one that I kept getting was this bunyip thing. Yeah, no, the bunyip is the only one I know of. Mm-hmm. Um there are some stories I've been reading up a lot with my son as well about the First Nations or Aboriginal people. Mm-hmm. They do have a lot of tales about you know, like thunder or yeah. not not specific monsters, but if you go out at night, there are and there are animals that <laughs> oh yeah that are pretty nasty out here. Definitely, okay. definitely. I, I, can't, I can't think of a tale as specific as the bunyip now. Okay, well, hey, I mean, I'm gonna put up when I whenever I go to edit this, I'm gonna put up a picture of it. It's, the picture I got here is a pretty gnarly looking picture. It looks pretty cool. Yeah, uh, I, I have seen pictures, and it's more that. Uh, that I don't know who initially created it yeah. or something, but it's it's just a made up thing. Yeah. I got you. I got you. So what are the things since you've been there that like impressed you? Well, besides being able to, you know, say fuck everywhere and whatnot. Seems like that's <laughs> obviously a pretty cool thing. Definitely. I agree with you on that one. But besides that, what are some things that definitely like impressed you and caught you off guard? Okay. Um, I don't know if you're a foodie or a coffee person, but the coffee here mm-hmm. is fucking great. I don't know if you're a coffee person. I am not. I do not you're drink not. coffee. Okay. I, I did look up, though, that it's like 8.30 over there for you right now. So I'm sure you've had a cup or two. Yeah. 
Um, oh, and they, they call it a cuppa. It's a cuppa. You don't have a cup of coffee. You don't have a coffee. You have a cuppa. A cuppa. Gotcha. Okay. C U W P A. That like the restaurants will even put on the menu C U W P A. That's a cuppa, not coffee, not whatever. Yeah. Just cuppa. Yeah. Cuppa. Okay. All right. That's that's pretty cool. That's pretty uh, cool. It, it, you, 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 even if you don't drink coffee, you, if I say drip coffee, you know what I mean. Like in North America, you put the, um, the grains, hot water, it drips in. Mm -hmm. That's not what they have here. Here they have like the full espresso machines. Yeah. That's all they drink. They do not have filter coffee like we have back in North America. They don't. Really? Drink. And when I mention, you know, American or Canadian coffee, <laughs> most Aussies go, oh, that, that stuff is shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I like that. I like that for sure. And um, they, I don't know if you looked up, I'm still on the food thing. They put mm -hmm. egg on their pizza. Oh, egg put, on their pizza, like a topping? Yep, like a fried or sunny side up egg on, on the last topping. Yep. With everything else, like the tomato, the cheese, the pepperoni, and there'll be an egg on top. So it's not technically a breakfast pizza. It's a regular pizza. Oh, the regular, it's a regular pizza. It's not even a breakfast pizza. I say because I love breakfast pizza. Breakfast pizza is great. And still on. Is there, is there a particular name for that? Something they call no. it? No. Just egg on uh, pizza. I might call it, yes. Some would call it the. Uh, if you're gonna have an Aussie pizza, like the name is instead of um, uh, vegetarian or Hawaiian, look up Aussie A U W -S, S I E pizza. Let's see what I can pull up real quick. Aussie pizza egg boom. There you go. Aussie egg and oh, now this one Aussie egg and bacon pizza. That sounds that, good that to me. Breakfast, but but they eat that like at any time. People would have that for dinner. Lot. Oh well. oh, if, if you know anything about me, I have a pizza tattoo. I have multiple nice. pizza shirts. Um, I I have woken my family up to drop two hours just for pizza. And that's all we did. So pizza is definitely a big thing in my life for sure. I I, I proposed to my wife on a pizza box. Nice. That is classic. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, you, you'll enjoy this then. What's uh, up? So when we got married, uh, we did two ceremonies, actually. One here in Sydney itself and one back in Montreal for my family and so on. Yeah. Uh, but the one in Sydney had, um, it had more people that had more my wife's friends, <clears throat> my mother actually flew in from Canada and so on. Uh, but in organizing the catering, we miscalculated, as in we didn't have enough food. Okay. So middle of people eating, we're running out of food. We can tell we're not going to have enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wife, Let's order some pizza. <laughs> Call hey. them a few dozen pizzas. There you go. That's that's perfect. That is perfect. I think when we were planning ours, because we were supposed to get married, um, had the whole ceremony set up this past April, but then everything got shut down and we had to cancel. So we still legally got married, but we're gonna do the actual ceremony later on when everything's back and open. And we were talking about having a pizza spot catering us and like a pizza wedding cake and all this type of stuff. Oh yeah. It's in the works, man. Pizza is, is definitely what my life revolves around, for sure. <laughs> oh, and um, another thing, in, in regards to, well, not the pizza, but the egg thing, they will put a fried or sunny side up inside a burger. Now, those are good. Those are good. Okay. I like those. I yeah. like those. Uh, Chili's had one not that long ago. It was really, really good. I loved it. Yes, I, I'll agree okay. with that. I hadn't seen that, but I've been here 10 years, so things have yeah. Same stuff, North America, so yeah. Yeah, it, it came and went. I don't think they have it anymore, but when they when they have it, I tried it because I'm like, that's, that's different. Let me see. And it was really good. I enjoyed it for sure. So what are some, um, since you've moved from Canada to Australia, what, is, what are some things that you don't necessarily care for? Things that don't necessarily care for here. Yeah. <laughs> Surprisingly, perhaps the heat. Uh, the, okay. The, the oh the, yeah, that's got to be a big difference. I didn't think of that. Well, initially, that that was part of my reasoning, besides my wife being from here and so on, was, oh, the weather's a lot better. 
Like I, I don't miss the snow. The snow and ice, I do not miss that. I'm <laughs> glad I'm away from that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But in the summer here, which is the reverse uh, seasons, like summer would be December, January, February. Yeah. Fucking humidity, man. It'll hit like 35, 40 degrees. Yeah. Uh, that's just uh, 90, 90, 95, 100 for you guys. Yeah. But humid as fuck. And, and I, sweat <laughs> a lot to begin, I sweat a lot to begin with. Yeah. Uh, fully sweat. Now, last, oh, yeah. year, last year we did a trip to Northern Territory. Uh, you've probably heard of Uluru or Ayers Rock. Yes, yes, yes. I did. I looked that up. I have been there. Um, a very impressive sight and so on and history yeah, and so the, on. The pictures, the pictures were beautiful. That's yeah. all. And as you can tell, and if you look it up, it's in the a proper desert. Like it's, yes. mm -hmm. we, we traveled with our, they, here they call it a caravan. You guys would call it probably a camper trailer, a camper. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You, you hitch up the camper to the car and you, yeah, they, they call it a caravan here. I'm just, fuck that. <laughs> anyway. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so we, Travel the Northern Territory. It's mostly desert. Like it actually had those signs. Last gas station, which here they call Petro. Oh, last yeah. gas station to 300 kilometers. Like gas up here or you are fucked. Gotcha. And, <laughs> like it's, people don't live that. There are no how. It's not like, oh, I'll stop and somebody will have a jerry can. No. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're going to have to fucking walk. <laughs> and the, what's. What I <laughs> besides all that, I'm glad you're laughing. So we we we'd fill up, but it it was uh, the desert. It's so hot, that, but like over a hundred, a hundred, a hundred and twenty <clears throat> for you, but dry. Not yeah. I wasn't even sweating. It was hot as fuck. I was I I was <laughs> that I can put up with. Yeah. I, I like being where I'm at here in, in the South Carolina. Like it's it's the summer right now, obviously. And when it gets, it's been so humid the last few days. And I haven't like I went to Wyoming years and years and years ago uh, with my grandparents, but <clears throat> it was during the summer months of there, and I don't remember it enough to tell the difference between a hot, humid day and just a hot, dry day. But everyone I talk to who's like been to Arizona. Or somewhere yeah. that is more dry and hot, they prefer that a whole lot more than humid. Because yeah, the hum when it's hot and humid, it just sucks the life out of you. You can yeah. be outside for ten minutes and you're like, ugh, I'm about to die. Yeah, the, the humidity anywhere is god awful for sure. So I don't like that. that. That's more so Sydney's east coast of the country here. Mm -hmm. But obviously, if you go in the center, like I said, depending where you are, it'll be different. Uh, but like back in Canada, I was. Most of my life, East Coast, Montreal. So think Boston, okay. New York, them in the summer. They fucking stink. <laughs> <laughs> I like uh, that. That's cool. So, so as much as I, I love the – I love I, – you, I know you were asking me what I dislike. I'm trying to think of one again. But, hey, um, hey, man, this, you talk about Australia. It doesn't matter. <laughs> well, the, the winter here, and they call it winter, which still fucking amuses me. Uh, <laughs> Because it, it, it's like, I, and I'm trying to um, change into Fahrenheit, but anyway, it would be like 15 degrees um, Celsius for us. Mm -hmm. And they're out in fucking big parkas and shit. I'm like, what's the matter oh, with yeah. you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll show you cold. Oh, it's not the same. <laughs> no, it's not the same. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I got a friend at work. Yeah, I got a friend at work. He's from uh, Michigan originally. And when he Man. moved down here and, and it got cold, like down here in the South, cold for, for me is like, you know, 40 degrees, 30 degrees, hell, right. even 50 degrees. I'm, I'm wearing jackets and everything. And this kid's out in shorts and a tank top. Like, dude, what the hell is wrong with you? He's like, oh, this isn't cold, man. You don't know cold. <laughs> yeah. No. Uh, the difference with me, and when I first got here, the first year I was here, um, it would have been about 60 or close to 70 for you, mm -hmm. I think. Uh, probably close, more, more 60, but I was out in shorts and a t-shirt, and I'd just moved, so the neighbor comes out, she goes, are you okay? I'll, I'll fucking concerned. I'm like, what am I okay? I'm, I'm fine. Don't you love this weather? She was like, aren't you cold? I'm like, yeah, no, I'm not, actually. 
<laughs> I like that. That's cool, man. I like that. <laughs> One of the things I was looking into uh, as soon as you got back with me on where you were from, because mainly I ended up looking at a lot of Melbourne, um, Melbourne. No. Melbourne. No, no, no. There's one. It's I, I probably would say Melbourne, but it's Melbourne. Yeah. It's Melbourne, mate. Melbourne. Melbourne. Don't, don't pronounce the R. Melbourne. Melbourne. All right. All right. So excuse me, Ozzy, if you listen, I'm American and I don't know shit. <laughs> um, but one of the things I was looking into, and so tell me a little bit if you know anything about it, is apparently there's been a sort of rivalry between Melbourne and Sydney for oh, yeah. for a good number of years. Um, like, can you tell, tell me a little here. about that? When I first got here 10 years ago, I think one of the first things I was kind of educated upon is hate Melbourne because I'm in Sydney. <laughs> okay. yes. um, a, a lot of it, if you're into sports, is the, sport, the sports teams. Oh, man, don't go for the Melbourne team. It, it, it's often like that, like Boston, New York sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, in baseball. Um, it could be similar to East Coast, West Coast in North America. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I know I would probably if, if it's sports related then like I'm a Tar Heel so we hate Duke and Duke hates yeah, us. Actually, yes. Yeah. I, I'm not, not <laughs> much into college basketball, but college basketball and college football. Yeah. Um, is it Michigan State and Michigan and U of M? Like, don't think if it's, if it's football. I don't know. I'm, I'm strictly basketball. Strictly basketball. Okay. Yeah. So. Yeah, but if you're a Tar Heels fan and you hate the Blue Devils. Yes. Tar Heels, by the way, North Carolina. Let's see if I remember anything. Michael Jordan. <laughs> yes. Yes. Hey. Probably true. more that famous alumni. <clears throat> I, I, I could not name another Tar Heel. <laughs> uh, oh, Christian Leitner? Christian Leitner? Or was he Duke? I don't oh, even know. That's before I don't time. even know. <laughs> But anyway, uh, yeah, the way a Tar Heels fan would hate a Duke Blue Devils fan, that's yeah. Sydney Melbourne. But it gets you more, a, a bit the same way. I mean, when it's just sports, just sports, but Sydney and Melbourne, because there's the city, if there's an artist that comes out, it's like, oh, I like the good tunes, man. What a, he's, from, he's from Melbourne. Oh, fuck. <laughs> I can't like him. <laughs> God, oh, man. So it's they deep. Just, it is deep, deep in there. there. Or some politician does does some stupid shit, whatever, like they always do. Oh, he yeah. must be from Melbourne. <laughs> I got you. I got you. <laughs> um, uh, one of the things I was also looking into, and I don't know if this is more, I haven't found anyways, if any of this is more of like a Melbourne, Melbourne, Sydney thing, or I'll show you why thing. Um, is apparently Australia has some pretty weird laws that are still in effect. Do you know anything uh, about this? I've heard of so – actually, yes. Well, <laughs> there are some street signs when you go – and by street signs, I mean uh, – by the way, we drive on the left side of the road. The yes. Left side. Yeah, okay. That was a bit of an adjustment for me. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, that's right. I'm sure, definitely. Yeah. I, yeah, I that that was kind of one of the major ones when I almost turned into the wrong lane once. But right. <laughs> um, in regards to the strange laws, there are some signs. You're going into the what they call the motorway or the highway. Okay. And it actually says no animals or no horse-drawn carriages allowed. That, that sign. Kind of, I mean, that makes sense. Yeah. Who, who the fuck's riding a horse-drawn carriage in 2020? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> but it but makes it's sense. On a, on a proper metal news. It's not an old sign from 1910. It's a brand new yeah. sign. Is this <laughs> really required? <laughs> yeah. I was, I was looking at some... Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. That... Um, let's see. It is illegal... To wear hot pink pants after midday on a Sunday. I was not aware of that. I'm gonna get taught, caught next week. No, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> is, uh, is that, does, that say, does that say just Australia or a city or? Um, a some of or... them. 
some of them um, give the, I guess, the local area where it's from, but that one is just Australia. So I don't know if there's a particular city or region. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, but I also, let's see, we have only licensed electricians can change out a light bulb. That That's actually true. Yes. Really? Yes. Why? <laughs> <laughs> so hold up. If that light behind you goes off and you were to change it. Oh, you, you said light bulb. Yeah, that's what I'm reading. Yeah, I think I was. Uh, light bulb, I'm not sure. Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe whoever wrote this got, got a little confused, dude. Light bulb, I don't think, but like to do any electrical, you know, some guys are just handy. They they're yeah. handymen, and they can do electric, electrical, plumbing, whatever. Yeah. It if it's known that somebody without a, a proper elect, electrician's license or plumber's mm -hmm. license has done work on your home, yeah, something happens, you're not insured. You're insured your insurance is gone. Well, I guess that kind of makes sense. I mean, especially for insurance purposes. Uh, light bulb, I wouldn't think so, no. That's, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's probably just someone stretching it out a little bit, making it sound ridiculous. <clears throat> I, I've um, changed light bulb, so yeah, no, it's... Uh, yeah. Let's see, what else do we got? We got... I, I misunderstood when you said the light bulb thing, because that was... There you go. Sorry, I lost you. Well, well hey, that, that's what the person wrote on this article. So I just, hey, that's what they, they did. But now, was, there, there are some people, um, <laughs> it, this happens in North America too, that my mother-in-law has a couple of um, rental properties. So she has, um, she's landlord to people. Yeah. And she's, she's been, like more than once by more, by different people that have uh, rented her place. Call her to change a light bulb. But if you're renting and the light bulb goes out, are you going to call the fucking landlord? No, you do your damn exactly. self. But but that apparently that's not uncommon here. I'm like really. That is all right. That is yeah. That's that's definitely learning curve. I guess there. One of the funniest things I've come across is it is illegal to dress up as Batman and Robin. Mm. Okay, I didn't know that. Now, <laughs> in regards to dress up, mm -hmm. before I got here, and it's a lot more prominent now, but Halloween was not yeah. a thing. Really? Was not a thing. When my wife grew up, so she's 42 now, they they didn't know, like, they'd have American shows that would show Halloween, yeah. like, they were aware Halloween was a thing elsewhere, but they yeah. didn't. Pum they didn't do the jack o' lanterns, the pumpkins, the trick or treating. They can't. They did not do Halloween. Now I guess with people traveling and expat Americans and Canadians now here, it's a bigger thing. And like yeah. my kids, trick or treating. Yeah. But it's a really new thing in the last 10, 15 years here. Really? Wow. Okay. That, that's hey, good good for Australia then. That's a that's a pretty fun <laughs> holiday to adopt. The, the, and I say 10 years because the first couple of years I was here, and we didn't have kids, so I guess you're not as much into it. Yeah. But I was like, aren't, don't they sell candy for all? Like, don't they do <laughs> at least something? Like, I realize it's not as big and it was nothing. But the last, I did the last five to six years, yeah. uh, the grocery stores all have the pumpkins and everything's up. I'm like, yeah, okay, that's more like it. That's pretty cool, though. That's pretty cool. Um, one of the things I was looking in, at, so I don't know if you'll know it, because um, it's about Melbourne, that... Melbourne was originally originally named Batmania. Yes. I'd never heard that. Apparently, yeah. it was founded by a man named John Batman. And so That's it got possible. named. That is possible. And it, so it got named Batmania for like a year or two. And then they changed it to uh, Melbourne. Which I never even knew Batman was a, a last name, <laughs> you know. Obviously, <clears throat> but I thought that was that was pretty pretty cool. That's cool, and that is that is very likely. Yeah. <laughs> because and the reason I'm laughing here, 
I, I used to work at, I, I take calls from different people across the, the, across the country, not just Sydney, okay? And there were some places that were Batman Street. Bat, B-A-T-M-A-N, Batman yeah, Street. Yeah. At first I was like, what the fuck is this? Now, that's <laughs> right. Crazy. Like oh, oh and at the same time oh that's cool they named the street after like yeah oh, oh, how did that come around yeah exactly and then it's but some there was mis- the early nineteens and they they do pronounce it for the street like for that guy I guess it's Batman it was Mr Batman Mr you, Batman you, you know like you'd say you're Goodman not yes. good man like not Batman not good man right. yeah Goodman Batman that's pretty but, cool, though, man. I just looked that up. I, I did not know that Melbourne was Batmania. Well, we're all we're both learning new stuff today, though. Yeah. Um, one of the other things, and I've never pronounced. I I I know how to pronounce. I've heard of the Aboriginals, um, but there's also the where was I had it? Um, Indigenous. It, it it started with a T. Torres Strait. Oh. Islander. Or straight Islanders, yes. Okay, okay, there, there, there they are. That's yeah, because I've never, I've heard, of, I've heard of the Aborigines and and them, but I've never heard of these these people. Um, are are they like more the surrounding island original yes. people? Okay, okay. The, the, the Torres Strait Islands is a group of islands, se- separate from Australia. Okay. But there are a lot of people that come here from there. Yes, so it's a different place per se. Mm-hmm. And a lot of them that um, reside in Australia. Okay, so that's um, uh, that's why they, they, they would have uh, come up there. But they're not they're not Australian um, First Nations people, no. Okay, okay, all right. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. One of the other things I looked at was, and it makes sense for you being there. Uh, from your the podcast because you have your podcast as well is uh, Sydney is, is it Sydney or Australia in in general is the sports capital of the world that I didn't know <laughs> that's, that's what I read I've got a sports podcast from Sydney and I did not know that that's according <laughs> to let me pull that one up as well I mean there's tons of sport don't get me wrong but yeah yeah, here it is. We got Mel. Oh, oh, excuse me. My bad. Is it Mel? Don't make that mistake. All right. Nope, nope. To Sydney. Sydney beats Melbourne as Sporting City. So apparently Melbourne tried to have the title, and then Sydney took it away, and Sydney has reclaimed the title of Sports Capital. Okay. Uh, part of that could be Melbourne had the Olympics in the fifty, the fifty-six, I think. Like the Summer Olympics, the big Summer Olympic, and Sydney got them in 2000 more recently. So I don't know if that's when that changed. Okay. Um, I'd, I'd actually never heard that. I, I mean, I've also often heard the, um, as they call it here, the banter back and forth between Sydney and Melbourne, and they'll both claim, oh, well, we've got this, well, we've got that, and we've got oh, this. Oh, yeah, for sure, for sure. I'd never heard, say, a, a third party, a, a neutral party going no no sydney's the sporting capital um well you're from sydney we'll so we're gonna say it's sydney <laughs> we'll take the title. Um, i guess it's similar in the states would be uh, new york and la not Probably. necessarily but they never because they're the two biggest yeah uh, biggest markets big so they want everything oh yeah <laughs> or I don't know. Is it still like that? It was more like in the 90s, and this had more to do with um, rap music and whatever. You had the East Coast and West Coast thing going on. Um, Like in, in sports or in general? In, well, I remember the rap music stuff because there was Notorious B.I.G. and... Yep. Um, yeah, we don't really have that and, back and, and forth. And Tupac yeah. were from the different areas, and it was sort of that rivalry. Yeah, we don't really have that in, in terms of rap anymore. Not like an East Coast, West Coast. They, they're, we're pretty much all come together now, I guess you can say. And right now, with, when it comes to sports, well, hell, right now it's, it's well, nothing. There's nothing. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's nothing right now. Um, but it was, it's generally been 
whoever LeBron's not playing with versus, you know, if LeBron's on the East Coast, it's everybody else. If LeBron's on the West Coast like he is now with the Lakers, it, it's that. Uh, That's funny because there are basketball fans here. Basketball yeah. is pretty big, by the way. Basketball is pretty big. I don't know if you know or know of Andrew Bogut. That name he sounds played, familiar. He play, He got a. He was a first round draft pick of the Minnesota Timberwolves. Got a big contract. He's from Australia. Oh, that's cool. And he he's back here now playing in the pro league here. Like he's in his thirties, so he's kind of past his NBA prime. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, what did I get to Andrew Bogut? Uh, anyway, that, that it's pretty big here. Basketball is. And all the, the people I know, oh, you're from, I know you're from Canada, but like the, the Raptors once, oh, you must be, I'm, yeah. not, I'm not that big into basketball, whatever. Mm-hmm. But the number of people that went from the Cavaliers to the Heat, back to the Cavaliers, now to the Lakers, I'm like, no, no, you're just following that one guy. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Which that's is awesome. great. I'm- if you're a fan of his, that's great. But don't tell me you're a fan of his team. You're not. If exactly. You, yeah. You, you got to be clear. You got to be you clear. If you're to the Celtics or to whoever, you're going to like him, not the Celtics. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I've, I've, I've been Spurs for a good amount of years now. And it's mainly just for Pop. Mainly for Popovich as a coach. Yeah. Well, you, you, um, you're a lot younger than me. But do you go back to the days of Tim Duncan, David Robinson? Yeah. 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 I mean, I, I, don't, I never watched it a lot back then, but I do definitely recall, for sure. Definitely recall. Um, what are some sports? Because if you guys down there have rugby, rugby's really big, right? Yeah. R- rugby we don't have rugby big. up here. No. Not really. Uh, they, no. I'm not, not. You have to look for it, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's here, but it's nowhere like no, you know, no, it, it is down there. I would say it's the national sport here. Really? Okay. It, it, it's it's the most played sport. Okay. So, some would say cricket. It might be the national sport. It's the national yeah, team. I'm very, bring that up. And cricket is very um, posh. You know what posh is? Yeah, yeah fancy and yes, you know, yes. Like, like the Kentucky Derby of up here. Yes. Yeah, yes. Yes. Uh, but <laughs> uh, which is part of why I'm not big on cricket. But. Um, <laughs> Uh, rugby, which is more obviously a rugged name, we we all know of yeah. rugby, right? It's yeah, yeah, very rough it, and, and hard. It, it's, it's NFL football without the pads. Yeah, exactly. Um, I, there, and there's different types of rugby. So okay. There's rugby league, rugby union, and the one that would probably be better known there is called Australian Rules Football. Yes, I've heard of that. AFL, w- mm-hmm. which is a offshoot of rugby. So the, my understanding, the initial one was rugby union, and that was played more. And I'm talking like 200 years ago in England, in the, the the proper schools and whatever. Okay. Yeah. And then when some of the kids who couldn't make the proper schools couldn't make, the rugby team, they started their own rugby league. Gotcha. which had somewhat different rules. Uh, there's a bit of difference and so on. So rugby league is always is still known where they try to think of themselves as more of the blue collar type league. Okay. Rugby league. And then AFL came by from my understanding a lot later. That's the one that's come. That's really popular or well, probably the most popular in North America. Yeah. 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 Uh, known as uh, Aussie rules. Mm-hmm. And that game is, it's not. I'd say it's not as physical as league or union, mm. but it's way more. The field is like well, not twice as long, but a lot wider and longer. The guys are more lean, lean and fit. There's a lot more running and fitness involved, if you will. The typical rugby guy, you'd probably think of a bit. You know, he could be pudgy because he's going to tackle. Yeah. But the um, Aussie rules guys are thin like this, and they they. Keep running up and down. I got you. I got you. Even though, even though I'm more of a league, rugby league, the sort of the blue collar one mm-hmm. fan. And there's more teams here in Sydney from that, so I can watch and go to that um, more often. I've been to one Aussie Rules game. Best game to see live. Really? Like, like I'm a hockey guy and whatever. Best game to see yeah. live is Aussie Rules. Oh, even better than hockey. Oh, fuck yeah. Maybe because wow. I'm 
I've seen so much hockey that I'm kind of like, it's a new thing to me, but be. Just, just because of the athleticism, those guys mm-hmm. play, I think it's a total of 90 minutes or is it four, four quarters of 20 or four quarters of 40? Like it, it's a ridiculous amount of time, mm-hmm. pretty much nonstop on a huge field. And just running and hitting right. in each other and yeah. all that kind yeah. of good stuff. Yeah, and the the other one that I like, like I said, rugby league is a lot more like NFL. Is that it's more um, set up for to watch on TV. Okay. To go out is cool because you got the crowd and whatever, whatever. But it's if you're gonna watch the game, watch it on TV more. I've heard I've never been to an NFL game, but I've heard that of NFL. That, yeah, at the I've been to one. The stadium apparently it's not that great. It's, <laughs> yeah, I've been to one and I, almost ten years ago. Now it was pretty cool. I mean, you know, like we got to sit right behind the end zone and everything, um, but I'm not not really a big football guy either. Um, but you mentioned that you are a hockey guy, and Australia is so hot. Is that really a thing down there? I'm sure it is, but is it? It, it can't be as widespread as it is in Canada. Oh fuck no! <laughs> <laughs> hockey in Canada is there's. Even in the States, there's nothing like it. Yeah, yeah. We kind like, of, sort of have something. The biggest sport there, but yeah. in Canada, the joke that you're born with skates on is not a joke. <laughs> really? In, in Canada, everybody skates. Everybody. Yeah. You know people that aren't into sports? That, oh, I'm not into sports. I don't know. You know, I don't follow. I don't watch. I don't this. Do you know who Sidney Crosby is? Yes, I do. Really? The, Up there the, in Canada? The, the, like, like they'll know. Do you know who Wayne Gretzky is? Yeah, of course. I've heard of that. Yes, even I've heard of that. Yeah. Like, I, I don't know hockey, but I know Wayne Gretzky. Yeah, right. gotcha. He's like, he is kind of like saying Babe Ruth or mm-hmm. uh, LeBron or Jordan, but still. Anyway, ca- hockey in Canada is so so popular that nowhere will ever will it ever be as popular. Yeah. But that's one of the things that surprised me because I, when I got here. I was going to, oh, I'm going to miss hockey. I mean, yeah. sure, you can you can stream it now. You can watch it. So it's not like I don't get it. But um, going to live, there are live games here. There is the Australian Ice Hockey League. Really? The women's Australian Ice Hockey League. Now, yeah. And on my on my podcast, if you listen to Pucking Funny, <laughs> there's my plug. <laughs> there you go. I, I have spoken with a number of players from that league. Mm-hmm. And I, I I don't know if you're into hockey or not, but the IIHF, which is the International Ice Hockey League Federation, they have world championships, but for different levels. Mm-hmm. So Canada would be Canada and the states would be the top top level. Canada, the states, Russia, Sweden are the nobody gets close to them, right? Yeah. But they're sort of different categories, subcategories. And this past March, Australian women won the IIHF Division Two B World Championship. In ice hockey. That's so pretty cool. And yes, I have spoken to a few world champions. Really? Yeah. That's, that's, pretty, that's pretty cool. That's the reaction I like. Cause, so I've actually had the reaction, oh, Division 2B, who cares? I'm like, pardon me? <laughs> well, <laughs> like, like, I, don't, I don't know anything about the, the sports world down there. All I hear is I've spoken to a world champion. I don't care if you've spoken to a world champion in finger paint. And I was like, you've spoken to a world champion. Who gives a shit? You know? There you go. (laughs) It doesn't matter. To to get back to your question about hockey, like even in the States, it's a lot bigger than Mm. than here in Australia, right? Um, uh, You guys have 20-odd NHL teams. Like, there'll never be an NHL team here. Well, distance and so on. There'll never be. There's only one player may not have heard of him, raised in Australia that's made the NHL, National Hockey League. His name is Nathan Walker. Like, he's still playing. He don't, like, don't know. Anyway, that doesn't matter. <laughs> There's only one person ever from Australia to make it to that level. So it's not a very common. There's not that many fans, but the ones yeah. that are, they are insane. <laughs> Well, that's that's cool. I mean, that will hopefully get it to grow. You know, as years go on, that'd be that'd be pretty good. Like with my pod, I, I'm certain pod. Oh, I want to do a pod because I listen to a bunch of, you know, I started listening to 
Rogan and the, the bigger podcast. And I'm like, oh, yeah. I can do this myself. Like, when you look it up, you, it's like, and I'll never be that level. I don't have a name. I don't have whatever. But, you know, I'm just for shits and giggles. I kind of miss Take my that. hockey. I hockey, see what the Aussies say. And the ones that follow it, man, they're DMing me. Like, I hey, talk about so-and-so and talk about so-and-so. Get so-and-so really? on. I'm like, Jesus Christ. Man. That's cool, man. That's cool. That's definitely cool. Yeah. And, and just to show you, so it, it is fairly – like, they don't get paid. It's a, the biggest yeah. league here. They don't get paid. It's uh, pro am I guess you'd call it, in North America. Yeah. But it's still the biggest has one of the people I've had on is the commissioner of that league. Okay. And, and he does bring up a point. It's the biggest hockey league in the Southern Hemisphere. It's the highest level league in the Southern Hemisphere. There's nothing in South Africa or yeah. um, Kiwi Land. I mean, there's not that many countries, but he goes, yeah. if you look at it that way, it's pretty big. Hey. Hey, you got to take, take, take it how you can. And if you put it like that, that's a that's a big chunk of the earth there that y'all got. Uh, you guys down there are dominating then, definitely. Half of it, yeah. literally. <laughs> so so it, it's – um I'm trying to think of any qu- – see, I think like rugby or cricket in the States mm-hmm. and Canada might be similar in popularity. You got to look for it. But I, I'm guessing yeah. if you find it, the ones that are into it will be mad into it. Is um what about soccer?s I'm assuming soccer's yeah. gotta be huge down there because it's oh, yeah. huge everywhere except for America, really. <laughs> yeah. And what's funny is they do call it soccer here. They don't call it football like the English. It's really? soccer. Yeah, I thought we I, were the only ones. I did too. I I got <laughs> here and Nazi told me, "Yeah, I'm going to the soccer." I'm like, "What? Are, are you saying that like because I'm Canadian or because yeah. of my act? You're calling it soccer? No, no, it's soccer." <laughs> Well, and they, they kind of go, oh, the Brits call it football, but we call it soccer. I'm like, okay, oh, I can I go with that. Learn myself something like, again. The, the national team has made the World Cup a few times. Like we are that. The, when I say we, Australia is really good, and it, it is very popular. There, there is a pro league here. That's yeah. I'd say it's probably on par with whatever the North American league is there that David Beckham played on. And yeah, uh, I know that yeah. guy. Um, another, <laughs> yeah, that's one of those names. <laughs> another thing I was looking at that Australia is is or sports in Australia has got really going is apparently like car racing, like uh, touring car racing and stuff like that. Car racing is pretty big, um, and and di- different. There's different types. Like there's yeah. a Formula One guy, yeah. F1 is mm-hmm. worldwide probably the biggest. Yeah. Uh, from Australia, who's on the tour? Okay. Uh, on the F1, uh, don't even remember his name, but uh, I'm not that much into racing. They do the what they call the F8s here, which are basically oh the V8s, the V8 okay. engines, which are similar to stock car in American lingo. Like a uh, NASCAR? No, not NASCAR. Uh, okay. They they don't do a NASCAR thing here. They they don't have like tracks. Mm-hmm. The they racing here, roads and whatnot, right? Yeah, yeah, like they, they block streets uh, in the they block streets in the city and do it in the middle of the city here. Yeah, <laughs> that's pretty cool. That's dangerous, but that's pretty cool. <laughs> well, there's actually a see that's where Melbourne is ahead of Sydney car racing, I guess, because there is a Melbourne Grand Prix, F1 Grand Prix, and okay. it's it, it's in the streets. They just shut down the the center of town for a few days, and they have the race there. So that's there's, me. There's no. Um, yeah, N- N- NASCAR gets a bad rap here. A bit like in Canada, it's like turn left, turn left, turn left, turn left. Yeah, yeah. okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm not. I'm, I don't, I don't understand what? NASCAR at all. Never have. <laughs> because it's big where you're from. Aren't, aren't you near um, Charlotte? Yeah. Right yeah, it's big here in the South, but it's not my cup of tea at all. I, I'm, I live in the South. I don't. I don't drink beer. I don't like football. Or me, I don't care for football. I don't care for NASCAR. Yeah, I don't care for country music. Now, I'm born and raised in the South, so. <laughs> so what music do you listen to? Um, I listen to, I grew up, I uh, listened to a lot of rap at, at first, and then somewhere around middle school, I got into rock and roll, which then turned into heavy metal. So generally, it's anything between those. Any any form of, of rap is pretty good, except for new stuff coming out nowadays. is pretty garbage. And 
hard, or, you know, rock and roll and heavy metal. Like, actually, on that, um, one of my favorite bands right now, I don't know if you listen to any type of metal or anything, but if uh, you do... I'll, I'll put on Anthrax every now and then. Okay, okay. Well, if you like them every now and then, this there's a metal band from Melbourne, Twelve Foot Ninja. Have you ever heard of them? I've heard the name. Okay, there we go. Twelve Foot Ninja. I I, I probably wouldn't um, know, but I have heard the name Twelve Foot Ninja. Yeah. All right. Well, if you haven't listened to them, check them out. Check them out. They they are. They're very different. Their sound changes all the time. Um, very unique, very unique sound. Um, and they're from Melbourne, Australia. They've won a few awards here and there. They got three albums out right now I'm looking at. Very unique sound. Very, excuse me, unique band for sure. So check them out at some point. Even though they're from Melbourne. Sorry, Sydney folk. But yeah. <laughs> Oh, well, I mean, if, if you go, um, I wouldn't call them metal, I guess, by today's standards, but ACDC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or historically, ACDC is probably the biggest band yeah. are ever out of here. Yeah. Hey, that that's true. Yeah, I didn't think about that. I mean, hell, especially uh, when I Iron Man. They're, they're, they're still around, aren't they? <laughs> Say what? They're still around. Yeah, yeah, I think they still travel. I don't see why not. I mean, they're all still alive. I mean, one of them died uh, a couple of years ago. Um, not Angus Young, his brother, Malcolm. Yeah. Yeah, it says they're still uh, active that I'm looking at right now. Um, so, um, looking, yeah, go ahead. One of the things I was looking at about the food that Australia is obviously famous for, famous and probably for outsiders, infamous, Vegemite. Oh man, Vegemite. There you go. That's the. <laughs> I've never tried it. I've only heard horror stories about it. So I'm it's assuming made... you've tried it. It's made from yeast. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I know yeast of bread and I love bread. So that doesn't, I don't know what that's supposed to do, but I'll, all I know is I've heard horror stories about it. The, the way to use it is, or to eat it is uh -huh. you take toast. And you take a, a little bit, put it on a piece of toast and eat it. Then another little bit and just a little. If you put too much, it's way too salty. Why but, is it so big? Why is it so famous down there? You know, why is it such a big thing of Australia? It is Because it started here and it's, it's a very, um, uh, I'm trying to think of an equivalent product. I can't think of one in North America, but I was going to say it's very polarizing. Yes. You love it, or you love it, or and there's a number of Aussies who do not like it. Really, really. As, as much as they may like the history or the fact that it's from there, they fucking despise it. <laughs> <laughs> like it's like you cannot be indifferent to Vegemite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You love it or you hate it. Yeah, I think I know. Not, not, to, get political, not to get political. It's a bit like Trump. <laughs> You love them or you hate them. I don't know. That's Never. true. Yeah, it's, it's hard to find somebody in between on that one. Yeah. On that guy, for sure. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> I think I know one person I've ever heard locally that spoke of it, and I think she actually got like a Vegemite, the, the, the brand bottle, the logo yeah. tattoo of it, because I think her mom, her mom from Australia or something like that, she loves the hell out of it. And, again, all I've ever heard of is horror stories <laughs> about – the way it tastes, very strong, strong taste, apparently. I don't want to risk it. Uh, nope. Okay. Okay. So it was invented in Melbourne, of all places, ah. in, in 1922 by what they call a chemist, which uh, you'd know as a pharmacist. Yep. To create something, sound already. Similar, yeah, something similar to British Marmite, which I'm not sure what that is. I've heard, well, of, I've heard, that. I've heard of that one as well. I, I know it's a breakfast type spread, but I've never had that. Yeah. Okay. Apparently, it's the richest known natural source of the vitamin B group. So that's cool. At least it's healthy for you, I guess. <laughs> yeah. 
So it's um, okay. So and it's a very Australian thing, like veg like it was uh, created here. And they do say that it's a symbolic thing of reverence for Australian culture. And in fact, I'm reading this from uh, National Museum of Australia. A former Prime Minister, Kevin Rudd, tapped into this when he declared in 2007, and he would have won that election, by the way, that he was a toast and Vegemite sort of guy. <laughs> so, so it's, I don't know, it's um, America's, I'm an apple a day kind of guy. So uh, apple yeah, pie. Yeah, yeah. Apple pie. There you go. Um, one of the things I want I, I kind of, I couldn't find exactly what I was looking for <clears throat> when I was trying to look it up, but apparently Australia, Australians love their beer. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yes. I, was, I, I was talking with uh, the lady I spoke with yesterday was from Mexico, and they're very famous for their beer as well. And the only, I don't drink beer. Um, but I, I, I do remember what is it? There's that slogan or line Foster's Australian for beer and whatnot. Is, is that even really a thing? Because I did the only thing I could find was that's not really a thing. Like Foster, well, is, there's a story you know, behind okay, yeah, okay. Uh, for the Foster's itself, I do well, I know it was brought to North America in the 80s. Mm -hmm. it, it is an Australian beer, yes. It's an Australian brewed beer called Foster's. Uh, they imported it, I think, around the same time as Crocodile Dundee, the movie. Okay. I remember I that. I don't yeah. the movie he drinks any, but I, I always thought there was a... They correlated with that, anyway. I mean, that makes sense, yeah. Yeah. And, and Canadians and Americans really took to Foster's. It was really, oh, and, and I think it was the novelty and it was from a yeah. faraway place and this, that, the other, especially back then people didn't travel as much. Oh, you get that exotic yeah. wonder, like, oh, what's this like from literally on the other side of the planet for sure, right. yeah. I mean, similar to, um, you mentioned, you spoke with somebody from Mexico, you have a Corona, oh, wow, that's, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's a good beer but by itself, but there's a the whole, exotic and it's a summer beer and it's a different type and blah 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 oh yeah for sure so fosters uh was brought to north america and it it really took north america by storm but what's funny is that aussies do not drink fosters that that's what i said that's what i read yeah. um, that's what it was it, it, i knew it was fact, something like that in fact they Aussies sort of don't mention Foster's to them. I said, fuck, no. It's like, oh, and I think part of it was, oh, we sold out to Americans and Canadians yeah. by sending it there. And it's not really that. it Because it, it's really, um, it's like saying Budweiser. Like, it's it's a really mainstream beer. It's not, there's nothing special about it. Yeah, yeah. But but when it took North America by storm, it was as if it was this special brew that, no, no, no. The novelty is what it was. And Oz, in, in fact, it's really hard to find Fosters here. Really? I, I jokingly go into, like, you don't have carry Fosters? No, we don't carry that stuff. <laughs> That's funny. Um, but they do love their beer. There's tons of microbreweries here. And yeah. uh, they really love, and, and really good stuff. If I mean, you're not into beer, but anybody who is, come to Australia. There are tons of very good uh, microbrews. Like there are around the world now in, in the States. Yeah, yeah. Canada. That's one thing I've been noticing even here locally. Um, we got a few microbreweries that pop that have popped up in the local cities, excuse me, surrounding cities, um, for sure. Um, one of the things I also wanted to get into uh, before we go, because we're, we're already at an hour. Damn, we're already at an hour. <laughs> I won't shut up, will I? <laughs> um, is I'm, a, I'm just going to assume before you moved to Australia, you probably never tried kangaroo. I had not. But it's, before, it's a big okay. thing down there. Before I moved to Australia, uh -huh. I was not aware that eating kangaroo was a thing. Like, a, like, like you can eat any it. animal, technically. You can eat. You can, yeah. You can eat a wombat if you want. I wouldn't. <laughs> I was they, the same they way. They don't. I went, when I was looking up stuff to ask, I was the same way. I was like, I mean, I figured it was like how we think of horses. We know people eat horse, but it's not that big no. a thing, you know? 
it's bigger but apparently than down there it's, it's like in, it's in your supermarkets and we can't find horse meat in supermarket <laughs> yeah no what it, it tastes like it's not like it's not like horse in the popularity like the like I said, for horse, you have to go to the butcher and order it. Yeah. And I assume it's still like that. It was, yeah, okay. Uh, kangaroo is very, very lean. Mm-hmm. I can imagine. Have you ever seen a fat kangaroo? <laughs> Things are ripped. Right. Um, so it's very, very lean. You have to cook it. It, it usually comes as a steak. They mm-hmm. do some, what they call mints, which would be... What, um, like small, chop it up really, really fine. Ground beef, uh, what you'd call yeah. ground ground beef. Yes. Here they call mints. But mints, okay. you can have mints, beef, mints, kangaroo, mints, chicken, whatever. But usually kangaroo would come as a steak, and you got to cook it really not a long time, really short, or it's going to get really hard and rubbery. Okay, okay. So a steak that's, I don't know, half an inch high, 30 seconds to a minute on each side, that's enough. Really? Okay. More yeah, than that, it it'll get really hard. Oh, it, it's really, uh, it's hard to describe. It, it's similar to beef, only mm-hmm. I'd say a bit, uh, a bit stronger flavor to beef. Okay. All right. I haven't had it in a while, but I have had it. Speaking of kangaroos, that is probably when I first got here. He, in fact, the first time I visited my wife here, I went. I need to see a kangaroo. Yes, I'd be the same. Yeah. Okay. And I'm like, that's any, they don't exist anywhere else in the world. <laughs> and, and, and Aussies are, are still a bit sort of, oh, the, the some consider them a pest because they can yeah. you know, get into your, on your property if you live out in the country and so on. But I'm like, you realize they don't live anywhere else, right? <laughs> yeah, well, you have them. Let me see. Yes. Like some Aussies, I go, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've I've seen a, a black bear in the in the wild. You've seen a what? I'm like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> you you you've probably seen I don't know raccoons and oh yeah, we'll and, yeah. yeah. But the kangaroos, they don't live anywhere else. Mm-hmm. And and there's this one time we we're driving. We went to uh, a winery with some friends, and somebody else was driving. I'm in the back seat. There's a mob of kangaroos, a group of kangaroos, it's called a mob, by the way, okay. that starts crossing a, a, a bit further up from us on the road. So the, whoever's driving just stops slowly, goes to the side of the road. I've already got the car door open. I'm out with the camera taking pictures. I'm like, fuck, kangaroos, kangaroos. <laughs> and the other three, my wife and her friends, they're like, yeah, okay. like This is every day for them, yeah. yeah. We've seen, I'm like, yeah, I haven't. <laughs> right? Like, let me have my moment. And, and to this day, I'm 10 years here, and I've seen a number of kangaroos. It, it's not a, yeah. an uncommon sight. Mm. Um, especially like where we are, like I said, we're out of Sydney. We're not in the city. So where we are, not on the property itself, but yeah, I could go out for a walk and potentially see a kangaroo. That's pretty cool, right? man. But whenever I see one, I'm still like, holy shit, yes! <laughs> I still get that. Um, I like that. I like that. We have wombats um, that yeah. are nowhere else. Co- I have not seen a wild koala. Oh, you had 10 years. Not in the wild. My wife, who's been here 42 years, has never seen a koala in the wild. She's are, they, seen, are they protected, uh, maybe? Well, there aren't that. There's less and less, unfortunately. Yeah. But they are kind of hard because they'll always be hanging up in the tree. They won't. They, they rarely will come down or cross the road or it happens. But I've seen, let's see, wombats, kangaroos. I went to this place, if you want to look it up, and I know we're a long time, but um, Cahill's Crossing, C A H I L L, apostrophe S, Crossing. Okay. Okay. That's in the Northern Territory. There is a. It's called crossing. So there is a bridge there, but the yes. water often overflows yeah. over the bridge. There, there's wild crocs there, like crocs. Yes, I'm looking there. at. And there's no fence, no nothing. I've <laughs> been there. You you walk right up to the water. The croc is right there, fucking staring at you. Oh. 
the, the thing is, there's so many fish in there that they're well yeah. fed. Yeah, yeah they, they, this they, one. They don't give a shit that you're there. Yeah, it's a fat crocodile I'm looking at right here. Because ever <laughs> people, you know, when I mention that, they go, "Don't you know they jump out of the water?" And then I'm like, "Yeah, I am aware of that." <laughs> that that croc is so well fed of fish, it doesn't give a shit that I'm there. It doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't need to jump out in. Now, if you were to put one foot in that water, yeah, you're gone. Oh, yeah. yeah, you ain't you ain't coming out of that one a lot, sure. Um, one thing I want to ask you before we go though, and I just remembered it. It was either last year or earlier this year. Didn't y'all have over there in Australia that huge? The, the, all the fires that were going on around there. Yeah, we, we, we were fairly close to the fires, actually. We, we yeah. had to evacuate our house for three days. Mm -hmm. That's how close it was. That was devastating. Yeah. That, that was, I mean, luck, luckily, we didn't have any damage to our property or our belongings or anything like that. So I'm grateful for that. But it was really close. Mm. Um. We do know some people that um, I, I don't know if I know anybody who lost anything, but did had to evacuate a couple of times. That that was brutal, and what it did to um, the wood, the forests, and yeah. the I forget how many millions of animals yeah. succumbed to that. And we're, we're so close that there's still places that we go out for bushwalks every now and then, and the trees are black. So burn. First of all, there's a lot less trees. Like yeah. what used to be, there's a couple of places we used to go where you'd walk on the trail mm -hmm. and there'd be trees and ever You couldn't see fucking five feet in front, you know, outside the trail. Yeah. Now you turn around and you, you can see for miles because the trees are gone. Yeah. And they're hard or black. That, that was brutal. That was really brutal th th thankfully to um what they call here the fireys that'd be the the firemen fire with okay and the uh this the um they call them ambos ambulance people 911 yeah. oh which by the way it's not 911 here it's triple zero okay that's cool little tidbit of information it's a different like number but, uh, but cool. apparently I've been told if you do dial 911 Apparently it'll go do them. So I'm like, then I, I, I always thought 911 was like the universal because that's kind of an important thing, but no, it's not. Yeah, apparently. But yeah, to get back to the fires, that, that, that was brutal. But the, um, uh, there's a lot of the fire people here that are, um, volunteer, mm. volunteer fire departments, and they did a great, great, great job. Uh, That's good to hear. Like I said, the, the, the whole thing was brutal. A lot of loss. Thankfully, we didn't. Yeah. E immediate loss. We we even, uh, like I said, evacuated. Uh, even had to get our dog um, minded by someone not as close because mm -hmm. we got a few a few animals. So we got the dog. Um, we have some chickens. Nothing happened to them. We couldn't really bring them anywhere. But yeah, uh, yeah. No, those fires was. Not pleasant. It, it it seems a lifetime ago. Yeah. It, it was just January, and we're just in July, but with the pandemic and all that crap there, it's yeah. Yeah, yeah. This this year seems long as hell, and we're barely halfway through with it for sure. <laughs> well, Greg, I, I want to thank you for coming on. Um, go ahead and and, and plug your uh, your own podcast, and I'll I'll put the links in the description as well. You got a. Uh, hockey or just sports related podcasts correct correct and what what is it called it, it, it it's um it's mostly hockey it's called pucking funny um by greg Sava. most uh i speak yeah most i say mostly because I, I had one comedian from canada mm -hmm. i'm kind of big into comedy so i had a comedian um uh, in this sports it's mostly hockey but i've had a couple of writers who wrote about baseball and other sports uh, mm -hmm. but uh, mainly hockey players, broadcasters, coaches. Like I said, world I have champions. A, world champs. World champs. <laughs> one of the women who plays on one of the local teams here. Well, she plays in Melbourne, but um, she's originally Canadian. She's here, uh, so a bit like me. Uh, mm -hmm. Just to say, she 
plays for Melbourne, so I interviewed her, and she was actually on the Canadian national soccer team that went to the World Cup. So a World Cup soccer player. Damn. There you go. <laughs> I'm, there you I, go. I, That's cool. I, I, I don't know what uh, people – you get you get people from around the world, obviously. Is mm-hmm. um, Sounds like it. Uh, but uh, the number of, quote, celebrities that just go, yeah, sure, I'll do it. I'm like, what? <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. like, like, you're not even asking who the fuck I am and you're saying yes but anyway it's, I, I, I love it it's called Puckin' Funny look for it on Apple Podcast iTunes Google everywhere you find your podcast on Facebook it's Gregoire G-R-E-G-O-I-R-E Savoie S-A-V-O-I-E uh, Twitter Instagram the, the usual places all means uh, follow me listen Anybody listening? If you want out, you want on, send me a DM. I'll put you on. How's that? You, you, gotcha. you do your same podcast as World Champs. <laughs> there you go. Podcast hell yeah. Join the World Champ Podcast. Well, Greg, man, I appreciate it. And uh, you, you go have a good day. I'm going to get here and enjoy my night. <laughs> Amy, it's been a blast. And this is my first time guesting. I like Woo! to think it's too bad, but I think I went off tangents a lot. But anyway, oh, hell. I it, it, I, I'm off. It's my podcast technically is called Red's Rambling, so I'm all, right. all for that kind of talk. It's all good for me, man. I cool. appreciate you. Appreciate it, Jamie. Bye now. Bye.